Facebook ads for realtors, I'm going to walk you through the clearest explanation of how to get a high converting Facebook ad up and running today, but also two important things that every other Facebook ad tutorial on YouTube is not showing you, which is number one, how to actually get prepared before you start running the Facebook ad. And number two, how to actually find the leads at the end of running the Facebook ad. Because what you see so many times with every other tutorial is you get to the end and you need all this information and you're wondering where did it come from, but also you start generating leads and you don't even know where to find them. So I'm going to make sure you have crystal clear path forward in order to make sure that you can not just run high converting Facebook ads, but also find out where those leads are so that you can convert them into appointments. Now, two incredibly important things before getting started. Number one, if you like leveraging Facebook ads, make sure you subscribe because I've got two insane tutorials coming up in the coming weeks, which is how to generate leads for $1.50 using a strategy nobody on YouTube is sharing, but also another tutorial of how to leverage AI and ChatGPT to write your ad for you. Now, the second thing Thing before I go to this camera and start walking you through the step-by-step -step tutorial, I just launched my brand new free training showing you how to actually leverage ChatGPT to generate endless leads for free. And if you want that, just drop a comment below. It's an entire free training class giving you strategies. Again, nobody else is sharing on any platform. Just drop a comment and say GPT leads and I will send you that free training because it will absolutely blow your mind when you start seeing some of the ninja strategies we're using for high converting lead generation with ChatGPT that nobody else is talking about. So without further ado, let me turn on this camera. Let's dive in and create a high converting Facebook ad right now. Okay, so let's walk through how to create a very simple but high converting Facebook ad. Now, this is an ad that's predictable, proven in every market across North America. And I've spent over a million dollars per year of my own money running Facebook ads. And I've got the data to prove that these things work. Now, before getting started, a couple important things. The first is I'm going to show you what you need before you start creating the ad. Every other tutorial out there on YouTube just goes through the ad. And at the end of it, you need an image and you need a link. And you're wondering, well, where did that come from? and then you're lost. And I'm going to show you exactly what you need first so that you're not lost. And by the end of this, you actually can run a high converting Facebook ad that will generate leads quickly in every market again. The second thing, as mentioned in the introduction, is if you would like to know how to leverage AI in order to exponentially scale your lead generation, then just drop a comment below and say AI leads and I'll send you my brand new free training. So let's go ahead and look at this. We're going to be doing a custom list of homes under a certain price point. Now, there's a couple elements that I will get to at the end, including how to find your leads at the very end, as well as a couple variations that will work way better than what everybody else is showing on YouTube. So stay tuned for that because nobody's talking about it. So as we see here, what we want is we're going to do a custom list of homes under a certain price point. So you might be wondering, how do I identify the price point? You want to take your average price point and bump it up a bit. So let's say your average price point is 472,000. You want to create a list of the top homes under $500,000, slightly above the average price point, because that's going to tap into first time home buyers, people moving laterally between communities, people moving down. It's going to give you the best chance of the most amount of people, which is why it works so well. The second thing, which is where the ninja trick comes, you want to use an image of a property that's slightly above that limit. Because as you're going to see, it's not saying that this property is in that list. Might have sold. Who knows? What it's doing is it's captivating attention by saying, wow, would that property be in that list? Is that available? So let's imagine that this property is 550000 slightly above the list that we're going to be generating and giving people, but also it's really important to have a property that is definitively, obviously from your market. So not one off Google images, not one off of AI, one that is obviously from your market. So when people are seeing it and it lands in front of them, it is very clearly an ad about a property in your market. Now, the next thing is going to be the list, the link. So we're going to come to our IDX website here. And then what we're going to do is come down to houses and we want to filter this list by most popular. So popularity, the most popular homes, for example, we said the average price point is 400 
and $72,000. What we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to look at the pricing. So we're going to go slightly above and we're going to say 500,000 max price. And then you want to go slightly below and go to maybe 350,000. And the reason being is you want to go about 50K above and about 100K below so that it's not too low to the point where they're going to be seeing a bunch of trash or it's not too high to the point where it, they wouldn't be able to actually afford it. And now we can apply the filters. And now this is filtered by popularity. We've got the most popular homes under that list, 38 results. Let's make sure we can keep that link. Now, Time to create our Facebook ad because now we actually have the components that we need to create it. We're going to come over here to ads manager. Now this shows you what you use frequently. If you do not use ads frequently or run ads frequently, click see more and it'll be down here somewhere. So click ads manager. Now here we are. We're able to create a campaign. There are three different elements to creating a Facebook ad, and we will walk through this so that it's very easy to understand. You've got the campaign, the ad set, and the ads. The campaign is essentially what is your goal for the ad? For us, it's going to be generating leads. For ad set, is going to be all about your targeting and your budget. How long you want to run it for? What do you want to spend per day? Where are you targeting? That is the ad set, essentially the avatar that you're trying to get in front of. And then the ad is going to be the actual ad itself that people are going to see, which is going to be the creative, the photo or video, the copy and the text and everything people will see in order to become a lead. So all that you need to do is come here and click create. And you can see this is my test account. That's why there's a bunch of random tests here. And then you've got your marketing objectives. Well, awareness is for just getting your ads in front of people, not looking to convert. We don't want that. Traffic is going to be sending traffic to a website, but most people don't have a really effective IDX website. So we are going to actually go with leads. So the rest you don't need to worry too much about. Let's go ahead and click leads and continue. Now, I always recommend manual leads campaign because we want to have the most control humanly possible over this to make sure that it converts as high as possible. So we're going to click manual setup and continue. Now, as you can see here, both on the side and across the top, it's going to walk us through the three different components of creating a Facebook ad. Now, I always recommend naming it in a way that's going to make it very easy for you to be able to look at your dashboard and know exactly what the ad's about. That's going to come in handy at the end when I show you how to download the leads that you're generating, which most people, again, don't even know how to find. And so we want to name this, you know, custom list under 500K Calgary. So I could look at this and easily just from this dashboard know exactly what it's about. So when I'm looking how the ad's performing, the leads it's generating, I can see which ads are doing well, which ones are not. So I can make sure that I'm always aware. So we'll just copy this. Now, special ad category. We always have to use a special ad category for housing. Now, what you're going to see is when we go to the next phase of the ad set, that is going to make it so that we cannot target less than a 15 mile radius. We cannot adjust the age, the gender, or do much targeting. And a lot of people get freaked out about that saying, oh my gosh, we used to be able to target very specifically. We can't anymore with the special ad category. Do not worry, that's okay. The truth is it actually makes your life a whole lot easier. And the reason being is because in the past when you had all these options, it was almost too many options for people who didn't know what they were really doing. And so now Facebook's algorithm has gotten so good that you don't have to deal with all of those little nuances and components and your ad can still perform. You see, the one thing I really want you to understand is that Facebook is in the business of making money from people spending ads on the platform. So that begs the question, do you think Facebook wants you to spend money for a week, not get any results and never come back to spend again? It's a rhetorical question. The answer is no. So the algorithm is good. It's going to take care of it for you. It wants you to win. You have to select your country and then we are already good with this. You don't have to change it and don't worry about any of these things. I don't want you to be distracted with things that you don't need to care about. So ad set name, we can just name it the same. This is just the group of people that you're targeting. Now you're going to see 
a little warning over here, and that's because it's not selecting the right Facebook page. So we want to make sure that you have selected a Facebook page that is in good standing. And what you'll see here is that if you have not yet accepted the terms and conditions of Meta or Facebook, you are going to have to click that. And it's going to be one click, you're good to go, but you have to do that. So if we come back up here, we have our conversion. And we want to, again, use the instant forms, which is the form that when people click on your ad, it auto-populates their information and instantly becomes a lead. Very efficient, very effective. That's what we want to use for conversion. Now we can come down here and we want to look at the performance goal. Maximize the number of leads or maximize the number of conversion leads. Now, some people might look at this and say, well, of course, I would rather maximize the number of conversions from the leads. But the truth is, is this is much more for products that are for sale, that are easily tracked. You click a link, you buy the product, or you don't buy the product. It's very easy to determine if that converted. Whereas with real estate, it's very difficult to see if an agent actually set a consultation, got the listing agreement and converted. So this is where we want to just keep this as maximum number of leads. Now, if we come down here, we have our budget. Now, a couple things that are really important about the budget. I recommend minimum $20 a day. $30 a day is going to be a bit better, but $20 a day could be a good starting point. Now, let me help you understand why this is important. Is because the more you can spend in the beginning, the quicker you can get the data as to whether or not your ad is working well. So when people are spending $5 or $10 a day, after two weeks and they're saying their ad's not performing, it's because they don't even have enough data to determine whether or not it's performing. So if you're spending 20 or $30 a day, you can get that right amount of data in a fraction of the time so that you could see if it's working or not and either stop running it or continue running it. So 20 or $30 a day is a good budget. I always recommend setting an end date. Now, typically, if this was today, for example, I would actually want to start it tomorrow. Um, and then start it maybe around a time where people are waking up, so 5 a.m. But always set an end date because what I've seen happen many times is people do not set an end date and then suddenly they forget that they're running an ad and two, three months later, I've seen people running an ad that was not converting leads or was generating leads. They didn't know it. They forgot about it and it was wasted money. So set this for maybe a couple of weeks down the road so that that way, if it's not performing, it will stop in case you forget about it. Um, but if it is performing, you can come in and you can extend it so that it doesn't impact the performance of the ad. You don't have to worry about this, so don't worry about that at all. I'm not gonna waste your time with it. Now, this is where you've got custom audiences. Custom audiences is the retargeting audiences. The name of the game is in retargeting. And so if you would like to know how to re use retargeting ads, I'm actually gonna create a separate tutorial on that. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss that one because that's where the money gets printed. I crushed it with Facebook ads when it came to getting listings of buyers and the majority of them came from my retargeting ads because a general ad is like driving past a billboard once or twice. Retargeting ad is like you might see some of my ads every single day. And that's how you not just become, but remain top of mind. So again, that will be a completely separate tutorial. If you would like that, just subscribe so that you do not miss that. That's where your business will explode. But we don't need to use that here. You can see some of the references of, you know, the people that have watched videos, people that have, you know, viewed our page, things like that. But this is where the game is won. Now we want to come through and select our location. So because we can't go less than a 15 mile radius, we just want to select our city and you'll see here that you cannot go less than 15 mile radius. And typically if you're in a normal size city, you don't want to go above a 15 mile radius. You cannot change the age because of the special ad category as well as the gender. And you don't have to worry about targeting options. You could target all languages unless you're in a market that is, you know, heavily Spanish, for example. Um, you can get away with that if you are Spanish, but in most cases, you're just going to do the normal or most common language in that market. And now what we're going to come down here is come to placements. So we can edit the placements. And of course, Facebook says Advantage Plus placements is recommended, where basically it's gonna deliver it all across every single format humanly possible. If we look at manual placements, what I mean by every format possible is this. All of these different examples of explore pages and you know Instagram stories and all of these different reels, 
But after spending a ridiculous amount of money, about a million dollars a year for the last few years on Facebook ads, what we've found is that for real estate lead generation, which is what this ad is, the ones that work the best are the top four that I'm going to leave here. And I will show that to you. So let's unclick all of these because most people aren't looking at stories and then looking to, you know, get into real estate or, or buy a home, right? But they are looking and more interested and more intentional about that on the Facebook feed, Instagram feed, profile feed, as well as marketplace. So I have found that my budget goes the furthest and the conversion rate is the highest when I solely select these top four. Okay. So now we're good to go. And you can see here, based on $20 a day, we could expect four to 16 leads per day. And then it could reach 4,400 4, to 13,000 people in my city. And now you can see it's pretty good. Your audience is defined. And this is the total audience size based on the population of my market. And overall, the ad set is now complete. So we've got one component left, which is the ad. Let's come down to the ad. So you want to name it again, you can see, I just name it the same thing every time. Um, but over time, when you're doing some more ninja strategies, you will name these different. I will get to that when we do the retargeting for those who have subscribed. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that our Instagram account is connected. If it's not, you need to make sure your Instagram is a business account, not a personal account. And then you want to make sure that you link it to your Facebook page so that this ad runs on both Instagram and on Facebook. Now, what do we want to do? Single image or video or carousel? Carousel gives you a multitude of options. That's where people can scroll through multiple photos. And then we've got single image or video. Now, here's a really interesting thing that is probably going to surprise you. What works the best is a single image. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Mike, you know, video is the future. Video is what everybody's doing. But that's why the single image works so well. And so there was this phase a couple of years ago where the video ads did the best because video is new. But now that everybody's doing video and attention span due to things like TikTok and Instagram make you basically have the attention span of three seconds before you keep scrolling, people want to be able to get all of the information in a split second. And so that is possible with a single image. And so if you use a single image, they could say, okay, immediately, that's something that I'm interested in. But if it takes time to get into the video and there's an introduction and then it takes, people don't care. People don't have time. And so the single image works the best. So we're going to come through here and we're going to look at the media and we can add an image. So there's going to be a bunch of images that have come from your account. As you can see here, these are all the ones, you know, multiple previous ads for all my you know, listings that I've had in the past years of, of luxury listings. Um, you could take photos from your Instagram. You can even upload them. So if you come here, we can look at, these are, you know, just examples of my own listings that I've had. Um, and we're going to choose this one. Now there's a really important thing that you, this is going to show you here in a second. And I want to make this very clear. This shows you feeds and it shows the original image size. And then the recommended, the reason why this is recommended, which is true, is that it's square. So let's go back here and look at this. Look at this gray space above and below that is wasted real estate on the page that could be leveraged to get more attention to the graphic, to get more attention to your ad, to generate more leads. And that's why it's really important to try and have a graphic or format your graphic or crop your graphic to be one-to-one -one square because that takes up the most real estate space allowable on somebody's page. And that means there's going to be more attention on your ad. So this was an image from one of my listings in 2018. That's why I did not get it formatted properly because this wasn't an option in 2018. Um, but if you do have an image like this and it can't be cropped, you can change this a little bit to make it show the garage properly a little bit more. And, and that makes a little bit more sense. You can see it's a two car garage. You can see the entrance and that's okay. So if that's the scenario like me where I couldn't crop it, don't worry about it. And you can see here how it's going to look on some of the different formats of where this ad is going to be run. Done. And we can start to see on the left-hand side how this is shaping up. So we've got our graphic here. And then if we move this a little bit, we'll be able to show you that, you know, you can see how it looks on feed, Instagram, profile, and marketplace. So that that way, if you want to see how it's going to show up, then you're going to be in a pretty good position. 
And now what we need to do is we need to come down here and we need to add the text. Now, again, I'm going to be doing a separate tutorial on how to leverage ChatGPT to actually write the text for you. Um, so if you would like that, again, make sure that you're subscribed because I've got some crazy ad tutorials coming out that nobody else is doing. But for now, what I'll do is I will use my old copy and paste. And if you would like this, you could feel free to drop a comment and I will just give you this. Or you can just copy it here. And so... This is where it's really interesting. We can see, you know, if we do this and we, I always like to do a couple little emojis that stand out a little bit more. So we can use these so that they're like kind of, you know, uh, red like that, as you can see here. So using the right emojis from your keyboard. So we'd say, hey, you know, Calgary, for example. And check out the free list of most popular homes under $500,000, 500K. Now, here's the thing that I was talking about at the beginning, what not many people are doing. With an optional featured option here, sorry. So an optional feature. And so this is, if you know that properties under 500K with a specific feature are in massive demand, then you can filter the list even further because convenience sells. And the more convenient you make it, the more your ad's going to convert. And so instead of people having to go to Zillow or Realtor.com or Realtor.ca and basically have to you know, search every property under the sun, they can just click the link and then suddenly the ad's going to be there. That's why it works so well. Now, this could be, for example, homes under $500,000 with a pool or with a view with a finished basement, whatever is in demand in your market. Only you know that answer. I don't because I'm not in your market. But if there is an optional feature that is super highly desirable and less homes under $500,000, for example, people would be surprised, then that's a really cool way to increase the conversion of your ad. And then you'll see here, people can click below get the most popular homes under your budget. You'll see that show up here. And then the call to action that you want to use is learn more. Now you can see here with the preview, it always shows the first three lines, which is why it's so important to get the most information of saying exactly what market is for, exactly the price point and exactly the unique feature that you're going to be leveraging is all in the first three lines because you don't want them to have to click see more to get the gist of why this is so important. And then after that, we need to come down and create our lead form. So we can come down here. I mean, again, we can just say, you know, custom list under 500K. And there's a couple of different options here. More volume, higher intent. What is the difference? Well, more volume means that it's going to auto populate with the information that they use on Facebook. That's why it's more volume because it auto populates and then it goes to the next step. However, if you're like me, my email associated with my Facebook is not the email I use on a daily basis. So if I became a lead like that, you wouldn't get a hold of me. And so what higher intent does is you're going to get less leads, but they're more likely to be higher quality because of the fact that there's a review stage. So after it auto populates their information, they can go back and review it and change it and update it if it's not accurate. So I like to do higher intent because yes, you might pay more per lead. Yes, you might get less leads, but the leads should be, in most cases, almost every case, higher quality, which is what I care about. If you are maybe new and you're on a super small budget and you just want to get a ton of leads to get familiar with follow-up, you can do more volume, but I personally recommend this way. So you could use the image from your ad. I like to do that for consistency. We have to add in a short headline. Where would you like us to send the list of homes? And then under here, you have to put a little bit of details. I always like to say, please make sure your inform uh, information is accurate so that you do receive immediate access to the list of popular homes still available. And so that's just making sure, again, a reminder, make sure it's accurate, right? So that you can get the best information next. 
And so now you've got questions and it auto populates with email and full name. I always like email, full name and phone number, which is under here under contact fields. But I find formality wise, full name should always go first. So name, email, phone number seems to be the traditional way of doing it. And then you can enter a message up here, which you have to and say, um, please let us know where you would like the list to be sent. And then we're done. So now we've got the privacy policy. Some people will say, well, where's the privacy policy? Well, if you come down to any website, IDX website on the bottom, privacy policy. Well, we just want to click that, paste the link in here, say privacy policy and go to the next. And now the review screen, there's nothing to do here. It's just going to prompt them to review it. And then we're going to come to the end. So this is where we're going to use our link, which is why I want to come back here to the list, which we did in the beginning. So you can actually find it. So thank you. Click below to view the list. Now, I like to use emojis. I find it's just you know, more inviting, more playful. Um, and then I always say something like, if you have any questions or would like to view any of these beautiful homes, please f feel free to contact me here. And then if your preference is email or phone, you can put that here. Just again, another little element that might get them to contact you. Now we're going to do a view, uh, visit website, view website, paste the link in here and then say, click to view popular homes under 500 K now done. And that fits perfectly within the budget, uh, or the, uh, the parameters of this button and then create the form. And so the last thing you need to do is click publish and then the ad is done. But again, as promised, I wanted to show you where to actually find the leads once you start generating them, because guess what? You will start generating them quicker than you think. After you click publish, it is going to go through a bit of a review stage. So it will take maybe a couple of hours for your ad to get approved, but then it will start running again. I set it to start running tomorrow morning, so that's not going to be an issue. But if you set it to run like now, which I don't recommend, usually give it a few hours, uh, it will take time. So how do you fund the leads once you actually get to the point where it's starting to generate them? Well, it's going to come on your dashboard. And again, you can see this is in draft, but if it was in published, if I click publish, it would say in review, then once approved, it'll say approved and then it'll just be on. And so I'll show you an example down here of all the different leads for a ton of my old listings, as you can see here. Well, if we look at this, all you need to do is come under results and then click here. And this is going to allow you, if you just click on this to generate the leads from as you can see here, Facebook lead. And this will allow you to be able to download a CSV file and it'll automatically be downloaded on your computer. And then if you would like to, you can input that into your CRM. The reason why am I not downloading is because it's like a multiple years old. Um, and I actually didn't intentionally generate leads from this because this was yet again, a tutorial for $2 and 50 cents. Um, but that is going to be how you do it. So whenever you start running this ad, check the results tab right here, as you can see here, and then you can just download it. It'll be a CSV file and you can input it into your CRM to follow up. So that's how you run a Facebook ad in 2024 and likely going forward. So if you have any other questions, just let me know, drop a comment below. I do respond to hundred percent of the comments on my YouTube channels. I greatly appreciate you watching. Hopefully this gave you a lot of clarity and I can't wait to see you starting to generate leads from your Facebook ads. Now, again, if you would like to know how to leverage something else like YouTube to generate free leads, then check out this next video where I walk you through how to do exactly that.